uh, call this meeting of the Ohio County Fiscal Court to order this uh, 14th day of November 2017 at 5 p.m. First thing on the agenda, I'm going to ask Brother Glenn Gary to come forward and read some, lead us in a prayer and face the flag. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. 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 We and look down upon our leaders here, Lord, in the county. Help them make the right decision. Show them the exact way it needs to be done. And we pray, Lord, for those that are here to listen to what's going on. We pray, God, that you will uh, let their mind also be caught up in the things that runs the county. And we're asking you, Lord Jesus, to bless them for coming out and bless those that's up there uh, leading us. And not only that, Lord, but we also pray that you'll always watch over our sheriff's department and guide them and everything that they do. And dear Lord, we'll never fail to give you the praise because we ask it in thy son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I think you've all seen copies of the uh, uh, October 24th uh, minutes as well as a special uh, meeting on November the 7th. So I would uh, like to have a motion to approve both of those. Make a motion. Motion by Joe Barnes. I'll second. Second by Jason Bullock. Uh, are there, is there any discussions, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Uh, next, you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers, including the rate list that we want to apologize for because that happened because the holiday was uh, Friday, and uh, our departments, uh, some of them didn't get their bills in time to get them turned in to us before Thursday. Joe Miles, we'll scan over it real quick. Motion with Jason Bullock. Second. Second by, by Larry Morphew. Now, is there any discussion or questions? I've got a question there, David. Okay. On, uh, you know when we have all these, uh, which is I mean, the normal thing, but maintenance on vehicles and everything, we got all the different ones, like the, the, the squad cars and the county vehicles and everything. Can we have it where it's each vehicle's got a number, so we can all that uh, Actually, yes, uh, they do. We just need to include them on the bill. Yeah, each, car, each vehicle does have a number. Okay. It's, if that wouldn't be too hard to put it on the bills, maybe, Ann? Really? I'll have to tell the department heads to make sure on all the tickets, tickets to put the unit number. Yeah. Not the description of the vehicle or just the unit number? Well, I think mainly the unit number. Yeah. yeah. But, but now, description will be good, too, because if it's not, yeah, you'll know where it's a dump truck, a pickup, or a you know, car. Let's, let's put the description and the number on there. Okay, you'll have to send a memo out to all the department heads to make sure and get that. All right. We'll the elected it. officials. Any further discussion? Megan, then go up there and do a roll call on that, Miranda. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cowan? Yes. Morphe? Yes. Okay. I just got a question. Uh, $2,500 or something to wax the floors at court. Is that just one time or? Yeah, you know, that's the whole, that's all three floors and the courthouse. 
the big wide ones. We only do that maybe every four years, but they have to strip them and wax them. We're hoping that uh, our new maintenance program that they'll stay looking better and that they're ready to, they look good now, so we'll hopefully we can keep looking that way. Um, you have the Treasurer's October 2017 financial report. Uh, do I have a motion to acknowledge that we got it? I'll make a motion. Motion by Joe Barnes. I'll second. Second by Jason Bullock. No, any questions? Being that all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Uh, Bess is not here, but I think we, we have the clerk's. Uh, well, you've got a copy of it? Yeah, I've got one for each Okay, let's pass it out. She's subject to audit anyway, so. Yes. Yeah, I guess we. Oh, yeah. I'll make a motion to acknowledge me this evening. Motion by Joe Barnes. No <coughs> second? I'll second. Second, Jason Bullock. All in favor say aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Um, administrative code committee. Is that a, is there going to be a motion concerning that tonight? Yes. But everything in order what the committee agreed on, what you yeah, it, uh, revamped it. It just states that, uh, let me find my page. It just states that a, uh, made a reasonable effort to obtain a high school uh, diploma or GED equivalent. Okay. <coughs> I will uh, entertain that motion then. Uh, to reflect that view, that uh, addition in the administrative code. I'll, I'll second to it. Any discussion? Any discussion, comments? Um, go ahead and roll call. Bullock? No. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? No. Count? Yes. Morphew? No. Uh, motion fails. The committee can be presented at another time if you still want to do so. And that was actually the first reading of that order. Uh, we postponed the Coastal May reports tonight. We postponed the Career Center report, so you just skip over it. It's not going to happen tonight. Nor is the SEDS report because Kenny couldn't be here. And I want Kenny, Chase, and David, all three, to present that. So the next one, we're ready to open the pot hole at your bed. Got it. Uh, Larry, would you like to do that? Sterling truck and gives the VIN number, and it's the pot of patcher in the amount of $26,500. Uh, does it, uh, and, and if we accepted that bid, would it still be subject to inspection? Whoever picks it up would get the inspector. Yeah, let me, let me entertain a motion that says that uh, we accept this bid on the, on the condition that a couple of guys, whether myself and Dennis Baby or a couple of guys at the road department, 
for him, and especially take Dennis Fady. He's, he's worked on it for years, and uh, he'll know more about him than anybody else, I think. And he can take a federal, federal fellow uh, road employee, or I'll go with him either one, and we'll go and look at it. If it's acceptable to him, then uh, he can drive it back, and I'll drive it for him. So. Okay. Larry makes that motion. I'd like to shorten it for you, if I may. Okay. To, to that the, the bid that was read in the amount of, tell me the amount again. 26500 26, be accepted upon condi uh, upon ins uh, acceptance and inspection. Sounds good. Okay. And, <coughs> and authorize and to write a check. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second from Joe Barnes. Any further discussion? Or get out of the uh, insurance money on that. That was the bid, that was the who was that? Larry? Um, What's that? I want to name that company again. Yeah, Pano Well, it's SPA the LLC. Spalo. We didn't get to sell on Pano Patrick again, did we? Yeah. How much was it? Twenty. Twenty. I believe. I'm well, gonna put it on here for my notes. Did we get the last meeting? So much for the last meeting. So we 25. had it on the books for 30, mm -hmm. and they gave us the 30 less the five deductible, so right about 25. 25, that almost paid for it. Yeah. We, uh, we yeah. kept the old pastor. We kept the old pastor. I remember that. Yeah. So it was like 20. I was thinking 30, I don't remember the five. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking yeah. 30. Yeah. David, David made a good point. We've already used the real end of it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. it. Was probably been a thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So all this is due guys credit here in the county for having this done. Uh, I'd like to get more information out about it. There's a lot of things that a lot of veterans do not know at this time, like uh, they're entitled to a headstone, they get a footstone, they get $794 towards their plot. Uh, there's also a new one I found, I'm keep digging, there's 526 forms to fill out the VA system. So trying to go through a third of those, I've not got that far yet. But I just run across one the other day where you can apply for a veteran and you can do structural repair to his house, like a new bathroom and things of this nature. So I'd like to get more information out to veterans somehow. I don't know how we do that, but there's a lot of veterans. There's more veterans in this county I ever imagined. But yeah. I run through eight of them today, guys. Eight come through my office today. So that's a pretty good turnover. Do you have a card? How much was that for the plot? Uh, your plots, I think on average, are running anywhere from around Two to six hundred dollars, and they were they were willing to seven hundred ninety four dollars. Is that for the plot? I was a funeral director for years. Now I knew the monument because you could either get the the brass plaque or the upright. Uh, it's uh, like Mark. Arlington National Cemetery now. Yeah, they'll service one like that, engraving and everything. And one thing we do you gotta do is pay it for the funeral home to set on the plot. We used to go, we used to set on, go set on the plot. But there's a, and there's no one out too that where you can have the wife and the husband buried in the same plot. Only cost you five hundred bucks to have that. Done. I didn't know the plot there. That's right. Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of other things that you know I'm still running through. I'm learning as I go in. And uh, uh, I, Ed, uh, get that your card to Miranda here. She's gonna put it on the county web page. Oh, okay. And and with your hours and everything, right okay. there on there too. Uh, one I was really glad to do was i think it was last week i believe uh i got a gentleman from fordsville i think larry you and i were talking about him yeah, Bob Rice, 94 years 92 years old stormed the beaches in normandy and all he had was water cutters he got him caught in the bob water so he dropped him and his buddy next to him got killed German tank coming across the beach and he goes over and grabs a bazooka that was never trained on how to use and takes out the German tank. And I mean, he's showing me his pictures and I mean, it, it was amazing. I was, I was just an honor to be with the man. I mean, he's a very humble individual. Too. Oh, he is. I mean, he doesn't ask for anything. Matter of fact, he said, well, what are you doing this for? Does other people need help? And I said, well, you don't think you don't? I mean, it was it was really awesome of him just being the way he was. But. David on the county website, do we have a link? or anything he finds out that this information is, you know, crucial for the veterans, they can view it on the web page too. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, I think you can send that link to a certain website where they can launch applications and you can launch it off to the website. Yeah. Well, I, I talked to Color Guard and uh, myself. I do have a Facebook site for both of them right now. I've got both of those up and running. So that, that'd be a link to be used to. Now some stuff will have some of the information on it, some it won't, because I mean it's a link that you go try to look for things. But I've got a phone number, you can call me 24-7. Uh, anyway, now the other thing I want to talk to you about is the color guard, which David knows about. Uh, we're running into the problem, which I didn't know until recently, that some of these areas we've got to get to is back in the woods off the road. And you can't hardly get up to some of them roads and they were telling me one time they had to carry a casket almost a 500 feet or better up into this family cemetery, let alone try to get their vehicle up there. So I was wondering if anything the county could do to help out, maybe help us get a new vehicle of some sort or something that had a four wheel drive, like a service or a suburban or something of that nature, keep us in watch for that because this old car is, they just dropped another 600 bucks in that thing. And yeah, with Andy, you saw your Yeah, and it's, it's seen its better days, really. Have hey, we got anything coming up to search for us? Does it know? Uh, I'm not aware of it, but we'll sure keep it in mind. Okay, now, that's why I, I thought you guys would, you know, could do that or whatever. Oh. But another thing, too, Ed, uh, if we know where those uh, roads are, there's a problem. We have a cemetery committee that's working on that. If, if we, anytime we need, uh, encounter one like that, let us know we will fix that too. We're well, looking so, for the vehicle, but let us yeah. try to fix it. Well, someone's road. like on a family ground and you're, yeah. you're driving up across the cow pasture back into the woods trying to get to them. Mm -hmm. and, you know, obviously, like I said, I was in funeral business. The color guards really need, I remember the first time they ever did it. It's been 
oh, at least 12 years ago that they were four and they used to come, they come to all of them and it's just neat how they do that. They, they, I was really impressed with them. I, I hadn't been involved in color guard until these guys. And, well, you guys came to our school. I, I worked for Beaverdale Elementary. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Appreciate what you guys do for that too. Yeah, they do a good job. Uh, yeah. I, I'm a member of that. Yeah. I haven't been in, in out with them lately because my jacket, the buttons and buttonholes quit fitting each other. Well, the, the trouble is they, they were going to get you one day, but I took it. That's <laughs> <laughs> in shrink mine. It's in that closet. Yeah, that's what do you think you could do to help out with a band or something like that? We'll uh, see what we can do on that. I'm coming up with. Well, sure look on it. And that's about all I got. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate everything you do. Um, Chase is here, and he's going to give us a quick... Um, uh, report on the whole scene. If y'all got the right written copy of it last time, he's going to give you a... Uh, yeah, I apologize. Um, I appreciate you letting me postpone the oral report. Uh, last meeting I had a, my nephew's final football game of the season, so I wanted to get you the, the written report in by that time, but uh, um, it's always nice to do an oral report, and I'm happy to do it so that I can answer any questions you have or expand on, on anything that you want to expand it on. Uh, so I'll just run through here. We've uh, continued to make improvements to the hub. The cell signal down there was abysmal. We uh, had uh, Voyage Technology install a cell signal booster, which has dramatically improved the cell service there. We've uh, installed smart locks, uh, August smart locks, so the tenants and trainees can use the uh, facility anytime they choose. It has 24-7 access, and the, the locks actually lock, uh, lock themselves behind the person when they leave and I also put in a programmable thermostat so that we could uh, uh, increase our energy savings over there. Uh, as far as our revolving loan fund, we do have a few loan prospects in the pipeline. They're still in the early discovery stages. Um, some of them are still looking for the 50% private financing that's required for any loan that goes through our program. Uh, did, did an econometric uh, analysis on the state's uh, tax incentives. Um, took data from all the, the tax incentives that, have, that the state's awarded over the past year uh, for WPT and their application. As you know, they're undergoing a $6 million expansion at the old Nestle building, adding about 40 new jobs. And uh, it, was, it was announced that they were awarded $750,000 in financial incentives, which more than covers the purchase of that property. Uh, that'll be a tax rebate over the next 10 years. Uh, still working with the uh, Department of Energy Development and Independence to uh, look at a, the, the best solution to utilize the, the county's landfill gas. I'd hope to have a report. I'd hope to have a report to you this quarter on that. Um, but there's just been so much going on at the hub that that's uh, taken precedence over the, the landfill. We did manage uh, to hire a new assistant. Her name's Christina Carpenter. We got her through the uh, Work to Learn program, which is at no cost to the county. Uh, she's worked out really well. It's been a tremendous help to me because in the gap between our, the, the termination of our contract with distance assistance and uh, uh, bringing on Christina, it was, it was pretty hard on me there for a while to, to keep all the balls up in the air. Our uh, software coding cohort uh, has been selected and their first training session was actually last Monday night uh, at the Hub. David was there and had a chance to meet them and and uh, we had the media there that ran a store on them. Uh, we have eight participants. We had over 50, we, we had 50. We had 50 people apply for the, uh, for the program, 17 qualified for the program per the Software Guild's uh, uh, aptitude requirements. And then I left the selection entirely in, in their hands so there wouldn't be any favoritism or, or perceived bias or anything like that being a local person. Uh, so that's going well. Uh, they, the cohort meets uh, every week, Monday night at 6, to do a synchronous session. They all get together and they receive remote instruction from the instructor in Louisville. And then the rest of the 20 hours that's required of the, of the training, they can do on their own. We bought laptops with the remainder of that grant money that they rent out and then they, they can also come and and utilize the hub if they don't have sufficient internet access at home to do their training. Made improvements to the Ohio County uh, Chamber of Commerce's Shop Local Ohio County app. 
Uh, something else that's relevant with the Chamber of Commerce, our window for the 2017 People's Choice Awards is now open. I run uh, that polling for the Chamber. Um, just so, you know, for the public that's listening, they can go to the Chamber of Commerce's uh, Facebook page, and they have until the 25th, which I think is the Saturday after Thanksgiving, to vote for um, best new business in the county, small business, uh, and or large business, and, and restaurant of the year. I attended the Kentucky Telecommunications Conference. I wish I had better news out of that, but I do not. Um, spoke with Jim Ash Askins, who's our regional representative, about the, the status of the Kentucky Wire Project, and they've hit some cost overruns with that, and they're saying that it's not gonna be until 2019 or 2020 until Ohio County uh, sees any activity on that. They have, uh, they are continuing to secure easements um, anytime there's a, a line running over private property. Um, and anybody out there that's gotten one of those letters, I encourage you to, uh, to comply with that uh, because it's land that's already been disturbed by the power line. They're not, you know, requesting any land, they're just requesting to add a line uh, to the existing pole. But again, it's gonna be a while uh, before we see any activity on, on that front. We do uh, have some, some promising news on that front. AT&T with their $30 million they received from the FCC's Connect America Fund has begun uh, service of their um, fixed wireless broadband, which is similar in technology to Connect Grab, but much newer technology and faster technology. I think they're guaranteeing speeds of at least 10 megs a second. Um, we, I went back and forth with Joan Duncan, our, our regional rep, about doing a ribbon cutting, and we just had some scheduling conflicts, but we still hope to, to have that done uh, soon. She couldn't give me the, the locations of the areas. I know that it'd be very interesting for you all to know, you know which magisterial districts are, are getting these improvements, but she wasn't willing to, to give me that information. But uh, she did say that mailers were going out uh, to the addresses that qualified for the service. So it's definitely nice to have some other competition uh, as far as internet services are concerned with the county. And also just uh, for public knowledge, I believe that Exceed Satellite Internet has now started offering unlimited data packages. I was actually an Exceed customer after I dropped Connect Grab, and uh, it, was, it was a fine service. It had good speeds, but it had a data cap of 10 gigs per month, and that's like two Netflix movies, so uh, it, it goes pretty quick. But so they, they do know where the, the stuff is going, they're just not going to let it out. Yeah. They've already determined where they're going. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a slight objection to that because it's public money, and I think anything that utilizes public money should be subject to public information. Um, but they've claimed to the FCC that it would be a competition uh, factor, uh, they, you know, if their competition knew where these towers were going, so they haven't been forced to release that information. Um, spoken with uh, Governor Bevin and Representative Matt Castle, stressing the importance of getting the Bluegrass Crossing's dedicated access road project back on track. Uh, you should all remember that. That was $4 million that uh, Representative Tommy Thompson got secured in the last budget. Then we had the Pulse 50 of all the transportation projects because of the decline in the gas prices and, and thus the transportation revenues. When that was unpaused, we had somehow gotten shuffled down to the bottom of the list into the six year plan. And you know that's pretty detrimental to uh, us trying to attract businesses. We see that as the, as the largest, uh, the biggest hindrance in getting a new business in that park is, is the dedicated access road. We're but, constantly arguing that that wasn't even supposed to be in the uh, road plan because it was dedicated to um, So that's, you know, that's a continued effort. Uh, re we've researched uh, Beaver Dam becoming a historical district so the businesses can reap the tax credits for any re renovations they do. Downtown Hartford is a historical uh, district so they do qualify for those tax credits. But for some reason Beaver Dam currently is not. I don't think that it's... A, a matter of it not qualifying, uh, the application just hasn't been submitted. But you can receive up to 30% in state tax credits and 20% of the project costs in federal tax credits uh, for any renovations done on a building that's located in a historic district. So that's certainly an incentive to help those downtown businesses uh, make improvements and grow. Uh, continued work on the $65,000 Trail Town grant that we received. I appreciate your all support and utilizing some of your discretionary money for those matching funds. Um, work will probably be, begin next spring on those new river access points. 
assisted a business in finding a new location. Uh, we submitted our extension filing for our work ready and progress certification with the state. Uh, I traveled to Boston. I wish I had more time to, uh, to go into detail about this one matter in specific, but I'll just mention briefly. Traveled to Boston with a cohort of eight Kentuckians. Uh, met with several people in the administration of MIT. They're very interested in what we're doing down here in Kentucky, trying to help uh, citizens tap into the digital economy with things like the coding training. And uh, we met with them and we're looking at ways that, that we could potentially partner with them in the future. So it's great to have uh, people in, in such a high position in, in you know the technology and education world looking at uh, our region of the world and, and you know giving a thumbs up and say, hey, anything that we can do to help you, let us know. Um, I spoke to a business principles class at the Ohio County Area Technology Center on developing a business plan uh, and I pitched uh, trying to get a group together for the Lieutenant Governor's Statewide Entrepreneurship Challenge. That deadline was Halloween and I don't think there was any group that applied but uh, we'll certainly continue pushing that year after year uh, as long as the Lieutenant Governor uh, keeps hosting that program. But that's it, basically what it is. It's sort of like a shark tank for kids. They develop a business idea and then pitch it to a statewide committee. and. There, uh, there's up to $100,000 in scholarship money available. So any kid that's interested in getting in business, it's a great way to, to get schooling paid for. Um, and we, we, there were some that were interested in that, they just didn't you know, take the step. So that's the last quarter in a nutshell. If you all have any questions, or like I said, if you want me to expand on anything, <coughs> I'd be happy to. I appreciate uh, you know, the time that you give me to, uh, to present before you. Well, I'm really proud of everything OC is doing, but that uh, the coding class is going on there with the initiative of OC, that, that's just, that's really something. You're going to get people at the level to make 60000 a year plus going through that. I saw your coding class, and then I just yeah. threw the, how come you can't add more good? I know you said you, there were 50. That's all we had money for. We, uh, we, we got $99,000. From USDA yeah. to pay for a coding boot camp, and I looked at about eight different uh, boot camps that were done around the country that that could be done remotely from Ohio County, and um, the Software Guild came highly recommended from a, a friend of mine actually that used to work for the Learning House, their parent company, uh, and then just looking at their statistics, comparing to comparing them to, to some of the others, and the price was actually either middle of the road or slightly below average of what the average a, a coding bootcamp would have cost. Um, we encouraged the other of the 17 that qualified to continue. Uh, the software guild has financing partners that will issue loans to these participants uh, because the security uh, you know, in getting a job after graduation is so high, it's a, it's a comfortable loan. And then also, uh, we learned that the Learning House, again, the parent company of the software guild, is an eligible training provider with the state of Kentucky. So those $5,000 grad scholarships that Kenny and the Career Center are pushing, uh, you know, that the coding boot camp qualifies as, as for that scholarship. So, I mean, that would pay for almost half of it right there. And we're going to continue pushing that. You know, we want to send more cohorts through. It's just we probably won't receive a grant like that again because it was done more so just to introduce the idea to the area. Uh, to normalize the idea of becoming a software developer. I can't tell you how many times when we were advertising for the applications, people asked me, well, what is coding? And, you know, that's that's a question that, that we need to be readily answering because when I was up at MIT, they were talking about, they, you know, they want everybody to, it's so, you know, we live in such an interconnected world that it's important. Coding uh, intersects every, you know, industry sector, every level of society. And they said, we need, we gotta be teaching kids coding like as soon as, you know, first, second grade. Um, so for it to still be a foreign idea, that's why, that's the primary reason why we got the grant. Sounds good. And then also I will say uh, for public information that uh, we will be uh, announcing a virtual assistance training uh, grant available soon. That was actually part of the $101,000 grant that we got to also renovate the hub. There was some tr a virtual assistance training grant money rolled into that, but because I had to activate the coding grant by a certain time, I sort of had to leapfrog the coding training in front of the virtual assistance training. But that's something to, to keep on the lookout on the, on the near horizon is that I'm going to be submitting uh, a story and, 
and receiving applications for a virtual assistance training grant that will also be taking place at the hub. We want to we want to offer trainings at the hub, you know, across the skill spectrum, not just a high level paying job like software development, uh, but anything that could be done remotely. You know, I, I want people to to be accustomed to the idea that there are job, real jobs out there that can be done remotely from here in Ohio County. Thank you. Um, you see on the on the uh, agenda here, Brenda Renfro, but this was this paper she put out for policy on granting the uh, Senior Center for uh, uh, Political Events. Did all of you get a copy of it? Yes. Okay. So she won't have to present that. She didn't really want to anyway. Y'all got um, um, Okay. The right is for the senior centers available. Uh, if it's booked for a uh, political event for anybody, it's going to be fair across the board to this. Uh, you'll pay a $75 clean. First of all, you got to book it, make sure it's available. Then pay a $75 cleanup fee and an $8 per hour uh, security charge. And, uh, and that's for anybody that books it. That's for any candidate. Yes. So you can do it like this. Yes. So that's the that's the policy that the, that the senior center has put out, and we want to make it public so before the season starts, so no one did inspire everybody. You ought to charge hundred dollars for me. Well, this is the policy that we've done in the past. This is what we've done four years ago and eight years ago. Um, uh, I'm gonna get. I've got a uh, park personnel status change here. Betty Rucker has approximately 20 years of service, which had put her to the top of the scale, and she wasn't. She's one level down. Uh, we were, we're moving her from 10.42 an hour to 10.72 an hour, which is 30 cents. Uh, and it's way overdue, but Bo's figured it out and, uh, and brought this to us, so we do that. And I've submitted it, so I need a roll call. Olaf? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, then give me the library board. Okay. Um, we'll make an appointment to the Ohio County Library Board. Um, I, I do interview them. The uh, library board themselves recommends who to put up, and they give me a choice A and a B. So I went ahead and done an interview. Um, and one of the things we do in them, this wouldn't be for every board, but because of, uh, of the talk on the taxing, there being a taxing district, I, get, I do a litmus test on anyone we put on the board as of no new taxes. And uh, this lady had no problem with that. It's Michelle Finch. Uh, she lives in the 5th District on Salem Road. Uh, so I'll put her name up and do a roll call. Pull up. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. 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 Okay. And next we do the. Uh, that was the library. I did it out of order, by the way. It's not part the agenda. Now we're going to do the extension board. That was the library board. The extension board, I have two tonight. One is Alton Doc Pro, who already uh, serves on the uh, extension board. Let's give him another term. A oh, roll call. Pull up. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Count. Yes. Martin. Yes. The other one, this is a new person for an open position. They can only serve so many terms. But this is uh, Patsy Eddins. Um, I'm not exactly sure where she lives, but that's for extension board. So I'll do a roll call there too. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Town? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Information to both of those by the way, and then while this has been done. Okay. Yeah. Then next I have three part board of. Uh, uh, Appointments, only one regular one. So uh, 
Joe gave me the name of Shane Barrett for third district representative on the park board. Do a roll call on it. Shane Barrett. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. 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 Uh, and this one, I will need a second on. I've already talked to Larry about it. We'll put M. Douglas Smith representing County at Large. Second. Second, Larry. What are you going to do with M. Douglas? He's the County at Large. Okay. Citizen at Large. Yeah, Citizen at Large. Okay, go we'll call. Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Morphy? Yes. Okay, then I'm putting up as an uh, ex officio, meaning represents the fiscal court on the park board, Joe Barnes. Um, uh, let's go ahead and give him a vote of confidence. Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Morphy? Yes. 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 On the ex official members, I don't think you actually have to vote on, but let's do it. That gives you the vote of confidence. Uh, now then, give me that. Waste what a vote that you get. Uh, Clifton Sanders has resigned from the uh, wastewater board uh, due to uh, conflicts. Uh, he represents the county and lives in Hartford. Or lives or has a lot of contacts in Hartford, works in Hartford, I guess it is. And uh, it's a conflict for him to represent the county at large, he said. So he's resigned. And uh, I did interview, I'm going to put up Trina Oaks. She lives in the uh, third district, Joe. And uh, she uh, has a lot of uh, experience with wastewater. She worked at uh, Owensboro in the wastewater treatment plant. So uh, I put up the name of Trina Oaks to, to fulfill the term vacated by uh, Clifton Sanders. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Town? Yes. Morphy? Yes. Okay. We're down to committee reports. Now, what was that supposed to do? Oh, I know Joe has one. Maybe I'll think of what mine is time you get your say. You're out of job. I'd like to make a motion to add the classification of maintenance to the Ohio County Fiscal Court 2017-2018 uh, wage scale effective November 15, 2017. <clears throat> Wages are to be set as higher rate, $12, level one, $12.50, level two, $13. And as a reminder, any wages increased to personnel must come within the department's budget. Yeah, and if we pass this, this doesn't automatically put them there because there has to be little status changes like I did before God made it that. So the department has to have sold this in his budget and do it. Did anybody second that? Hang on a second. <coughs> Done, Jason, on status change. Yeah. Order. Do I need a second? Second. Any further discussion? Being now, Mr. Rokar. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Count? Yes. Morphy? Yes. Yes. Okay. Any other committee reports? Yeah, I have one, Jay. Okay. Um, we didn't, I didn't realize we was going to have a problem on the boat a while ago on the administrative code and this is what the committee recommended when brought to the court now this individual that uh, is uh, trying to obtain a job at the road department which he currently works as part-time he's got his cdl license he's got his tanker license he's currently seeking his cd cd ged and he's a definite need at the road department and what i would like to ask the members of the court that voted against this, if you explain to this court and this gentleman 
and the need that we have at the road department, why you voted against this particular issue. I'd just like to have an explanation from each three of you that felt like that it wasn't in the best interest of the county. That's all. Okay. Well, if you remember back when we put that in place, and uh, I basically almost forgot why we did that in such a big deal. We're, we're trying to become work ready, and we're encouraging all the businesses to have this policy that's in the county. And uh, to do that, we thought we should set the example ourselves. So you feel like, Judge, because of the, the, that particular uh, thought that you have, that we have to suffer at the road department, will we need a guy with a tanker license, will we, uh, will we put out chip and seal, we have to have a gentleman that has a tanker license, it's required, and he's got his CDLs, and you feel like that's more important then than uh, the need we have at the road department. Um, and Jason, I would ask you the same I'm saying, I'm saying the same thing to him. I, was, I don't... We have always had that in there as far as you need to have a GED equivalent or higher, and that's kind of what we are. If we're going to be a work ready community, I, and I'm on that committee, I've got to stand by a policy because we're, we expect more, and that's what we want out of our committee, and that's what the state's saying that they need. So if we go backwards, then we're not. Now, I will say this does he still have time left on his? Yeah, he, he's he got time, time to take the test, doesn't he? And he could go down to the clerk and then coach him. Wouldn't even give him an hour or so from work to go down for uh, for uh, so Kenny King coaching. Your thoughts is you chastise the road department and you chastise this particular individual because he's seeking his GED and had, doesn't have it. Do we not have we lost as a court? Have we lost common sense approach to anything? This is something that the road department needs. We definitely need it and need him. And he was. Uh, I think Keith can attest to this. This year he was. Uh, uh, a necessity at the road department. We had to have him. We utilized him. He's part time, and he's an individual. And I don't know where he's from. Don't know what part he's from. It's just someone that we needed the road department to continue the progress we want to try to make. And I still don't understand you guys' philosophy when it comes to that. And right. I know we know we need to work ready, and, as, and I'm not against education by any means. But I'm not against the experience that this individual has that puts forth for the road department. Uh, yeah, like I said, he'll have time to go take it again. He's still got time left on the seasonal, and we won't fill the full time job until he has a chance to get it. The last conference I went to, I talked to J.D. Cheney, which is the executive director. He's an attorney with the League of Cities. And I talked to Richard Ornstein, and I explained to him that they was wanting to change the GED, and they both advised not to. That's my vote. They advised not to change your policy like okay. that. What was their reason, Larry? What did he give you the reason for not wanting to change? Well, it was put in there for a reason. You know, you're up. You talk about your county was supposed to be uh, work ready, and and you wanting people to get an education, and then you take it away from certain people at work. And he said it. The two attorneys advised against it. Well. I'm not going to go against the attorneys. All I'm saying is, if an individual is 50 years old and has 30 years experience as a mechanic, and we, we, tell, the, we tell that individual, we're sorry you don't have the GED or whatever, so we bypass, the county loses out because of something that common sense doesn't even come into play. I think the indication is to the attorneys, the question was proposed a little bit differently, Larry, if I, if I remember right. I think the question was whether the department the department could have GED while one other department could not have GED. You know what I'm saying? I right, think that was right. the question proposed to him, whether the road department and he said, and, and both of them said the same thing. They said if you don't change it for one, you might change it for all, but they recommend not changing for anybody if you already have it in place. And I have JD phone phone number in my bill phone if anybody wants to call it. But this could, the way it was written, Renetta, is it, it concerns all the parts. It's not just limited to the road department. That's correct. It was yeah. all. Larry, I was on the fence there for a while, but when I sat down and looked at what I thought was, which we all have, you know, different opinions. We're representing our district the best we can, but when I sat there and looked at what the need was for the county and the, you know, when we, when we advertise for a job, some of the candidates that we've gotten, and I hated to think that we would have a guy that was well qualified, 
I think he's done that job. He's done that job for us, and not only done that job for us, he's done that job for other companies and acquired like a tanker's license and a CDL. I, I did value that a little bit more important in that in that position than the GED. Yeah, and that's where I waited it out. But you know, you know I respect everybody for their respect everybody for their decisions. But at the same time, I thought it was it was a little bit more crucial on the need that we had. And, and I can understand this situation, but I just don't want to go backwards in the county when you got something. Mm -hmm. And we do have a seasonal position where he could be hired seasonal, which I think he is, or probably, yeah, he is. and it allows him time to go and have the job, and allows him time to go and, and finish and get his GED. Yeah, and Kenny and Kenny Autry and uh, and uh, so David Randolph like, would, would actually be glad to tutor. It's not like we're saying no. We're, you have this opportunity. You can work and through a seasonal position and 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 get qualified to then get into the full time job. And the problem the only the only problem we run into with that on Jason is that our seasonal jobs are pay much less than what the growth department job does, and it's hard to get anybody that's actually experienced and then you've got that that. That limitation there, you yeah. know, but what if you know where you could be drawn as people that's as a proven operator, and, yeah. and you know, so I think you have to look at it, you know, per what you're actually hiring for, and that's where you know, because I'm not against education at all, you know. Well, we let's, let's move on to that. We can, if, if we want to, if the committee wants to present that again, or, or uh, have time to talk to other uh, managers that don't come up again, it can. Any other committee reports? Uh, uh, okay, I know what it was. Justin, yes, on the Lexington Lane thing, what did we say that don't needs give the uh, the people who signed the Easters to sign us enough to work with them? Well, I just got this before the meeting, about uh, 20 or 30 minutes before the meeting. Okay. So Keith and I went over, and it's not complete. So Miranda attempted, uh, but there were some scanner issues. So she attempted to try to get it to me earlier today. But Keith and I went over to the clerk's office uh, to determine what was platted for Lexington Lane. Lexington Lane is the area in the Utica and Hidden Valley. Um, and the road department reviewers report gives an indication that the proposed road would be 16 feet in width. However, uh, I, I ran some title opinions on this, on some tracks here in Lexington. And uh, I thought there was probably a plat with the clerk's office, so Keith and I went. And I believe it looks, and we'd probably have to ask the surveyor, but it looks like this may be a, actually a 20-foot uh, right away when, when I look at it, and a 10-foot uh, easement on each side. But I want to confirm that with the um, surveyor. Okay. Well, let's put that off to the next meeting, Joe. Uh, uh, that is your district, so if you get a chance to look, look into it. Okay. But Joe, you would let them know, and I know they probably want maintenance more than anything, but uh, based upon the fact that they bought the plat, uh, the, the uh, tracts of land that are platted, uh, and Lexington Lane is also platted, I don't think there's any question that it's not a public access way. It's whether the county maintains it. I imagine their petition, they hope for that to happen. I'll just try to get you the length of it, I mean, the width of it next time. Okay. Uh, it's it's a big need that everybody only wants it. They've been hollering for it for years. Been several years they wanted it. They had trouble getting one uh, easement for a few years, but that person come around on the side. So that's where we're at on that. Okay, uh, Master's comments and requests. Let's go to uh, Jason. No, thank you. Joe. Judge, on that, on that road right there, now, where exactly is it located again? You know where Indian Valley Subdivision is? I believe so. Is it right across from the members' coal barn. Right across from the land of Cole Barn. That's not my district. Oh, that's the same? No, that's the same. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, but it's, it's uh, it, yeah, as a matter of fact, you've been out there with me. Well, I, I just, I it's just in Hidden Valley like, Subdivision, right across the Mexico Railroad. I'm looking over one. Anyway, so. so you don't want any more roads, Joe? <laughs> Do what? I said you don't want any more roads? <laughs> I'm pretty good on roads. So, I'll take some more road money, though. There you go. There's a chrome lane that gives you. <laughs> oh, okay. How much road money does it come with? Okay. Okay. Uh, Larry? No. Larry? Well, what's well, the status on the double wide? It is moved. Uh, didn't you see that picture? 
I actually, I think we received it in text message, and, and Larry didn't get text messages. Okay. Yeah, it's gone. Here, did you get it? Did get, she gave us a picture. Did okay. everybody get it? No, it's just to pass around. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was sitting there holding Where are we at on the, uh, on the uh, museum? How's everything going? Since you're here, are you sitting on the there? Everything on Doing good. Um, Could you give us an update on that while they're looking at that? Sure. I appreciate it. Trying to get you up here in front. It's doing good. Um, the double wide has moved, and the cleanup will happen next week. But the uh, you know, wide moved, it's got to be put together. And it looks pretty good, actually, where it is. It, I'm surprised when it actually got on there. There's enough room to go down back to the stage and things. It looks pretty good. Uh, the museum, the uh, Keith has been out there working today. The road is completed. The fuel tank will be installed on Friday, so I believe the order is the foundation of the, what is it called, the primer of the paint is on. So the order is the fuel tank will be installed, the heat put in, then the lighting, and then the painters will be there to finish, and then the finishing man. So we're really, really moving along quickly now. Uh, the next step is the heat, to get the heat connected. So there's really only four more things to go, and we're starting they to do it. Will they be working next Wednesday? Will they be, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, we're on. I'm like, that's we're still right on with our budget. It's getting really close. Yes, when we, um, Bob and I sat down last week, and we did a projection of what we think uh, for everything. There was a little adjustment, you know, we said before in the foundation, and some of the things have been a little adjusted, but um, it was really close. Yeah, all really close. Close. <laughs> we'll get, we'll get out, so it shouldn't be much adjustment. Yeah, it, it's close. It's it's uh, I'm just going right, right in there. I am really at the point of looking for volunteers because um, modern woodsmen have given me uh, shrubbery, and we need some volunteers to help plant that. Uh, we're ready to do a walkway. We could use volunteers for that, and I know um, you know it's a time for <coughs> volunteers to come forward. So we can save some money on the finishing of the museum because we were gracious to build the foundation and the framework with the governor's money, but it's up to the county to come through now, county citizens and things, to help with some volunteer work and donations to finish the inside. So now is the time if anybody's out there that wants to volunteer, it's the time to call the office and do that. Okay. And also, I'd, I'd encourage any of you that haven't been up lately to come up and see it is under lock now because we do have nice clear painted walls. So, but I'm very willing to go up anytime you want to see it. When you said that we might have some donations to finish the inside, I thought everything from the actual building, framework and all, and the inside, everything inside was all going to be finished by the, the, the building. Yes, the building. I'm talking about displays Display. okay. and things like that. Like, for instance, in, within the building of the framework, we had two uh, display cases built, but that was okay. But um, to put things in there and, and right. get that finishing work done. So everything, though, as far as the building yes. being complete. Yes, the building is completed. It's going to be on the Heat, lights, right. and that's all on budget. Uh -huh. okay. So, but to get the uh, displays and things. And we have some fundraisers planned. Um, graciously, some bands have been calling me. Uh, one particular band wants to do a Christmas show and donate that money to the museum. Another fella, um, Gary Brewer, has contacted me and wants to do a CD release and return that money to the museum. The band that I mentioned for the Christmas show is King's Highway. They want to do a Christmas party and donate that. So people are, are seeing the progress and wanting to get involved now. Watkins Watkins Nursery and Elmsboro donated too, didn't they? The landscaping? No, that was from uh, my Lord's <laughs> So. You know, I've always wanted to see that double wide move. It's moved. <laughs> no, no. Uh. <laughs> I know you did. I, I did it just for you. <laughs> as we, uh, it's not for Joey, but as, as we talk about budgets, and I got your memo in about the uh, about the monies that we're talking about as far as Armstrong Coal filing bankruptcy and then we've got a projected cost of uh, retirement that's going to be probably eight to ten percent i just want to cost the court to be careful in their spending because next year depending on what uh, happens with armstrong coal whether anybody buys it and whether they continue mining as much or, or what 
but uh, we better be cautious about meeting any type of excessive spending, or, or we're gonna we're gonna be a little bit in trouble in the forthcoming years. So you thought what, I mentioned. My understanding is is it Blackhawk, Nighthawk? What is Nighthawk? Did they buy them out and maybe take over in February? They're looking at it, but it's not official. It's not proposed, official. Right. Proposed agreement, and right now they're in bankruptcy. And when they come out of bankruptcy is where everything is depending on how all that shakes out, it'd be based on the night off. Based uh, or not. So, you know, but at the same time, and this is what I've, I've said before, the boot mines, which is the one that's the very south out of Stantown, down in the quality area or whatever, it was one of the largest producer, circuit producers, and it's mined out. It's just, it got to the point where it was going to mine out anyway. So, you know, it's it's subject to be done. You know, the 60-day notices went out and they would be finished on December the 8th. Now, what Nighthawk might do, you know, when they, if they do buy, is, uh, you know, that's all proposed and we don't know what will actually happen, but I mean, that, that mine is to be actually mined out and finished and there won't be any more coal coming out of that surface mine. So that's a large, quantity of coal that we're going to be losing each month. Uh, Walt, would you come give us a quick Rochester Dam report? Real quick. That's good. Uh, as most of you know, we've been working on this Rochester Dam since about 2003. The Corps coming in and said they were going to blow it out and all this good stuff. But anyway, we kind of got that halted and uh, been working on trying to get it into private hands, but you, we've done that through a lease. So now we're actually doing that through an ownership. The uh, commission will own it, counties, somebody will own that thing. But uh, we were lucky enough to uh, receive a $3 million grant. We have to match a million, so it's actually a $4 million project. So basically right now, we just had a meeting on this last Thursday. That's about, we've done our filings, the grant's been approved, uh, they'll probably do a big press release on it someday or something, you know, but uh, other than that, as far as the work, we're, our next step is uh, hiring an engineering firm, which probably about the only one that's around that does that type is the one that did the last study, which is uh, Stan Tech, and we're trying to get it approved by EDA to rehire them. Once they approve that, we'll get another study done. and. Uh, Make sure there's no endangered species or anything like that. The way, then the work should start within within 24 months, and hopefully before that. But that's kind of basically where we're at. Thank you, Walt. Thank you. Well, while we're on that subject, David, you know, they, uh, it's not really to do with the, the dam, but you know, we finished those yes. the ramp approaches down there on the ferry, and it was really nice. Yes. It was, it was a good thing that we got done down there. And, and, you, and you helped on it, though. Thank you, too. But, uh, but anyway, there was, there was a lot of help on that. Uh, I know several people talked to the state representatives and everything, and money come from the state down to, I believe, the Rochester board. Is that right? But anyway, it looks much better. You know, we don't have those steep approaches, and the cars are dragging our bumpers and as they enter the ferry. And, and uh, we ought to be real proud that we got that project done. Yeah. So. The fellow knew what he was doing when he poured that concrete tube by making those ridges yeah. in there to run that water off. Yeah. Yeah. He, seemed to, he seemed to know his business when it comes to concrete. Yeah. Larry Morphew and I went down to do the, on the first day of back open to do our boat ride. Right. It, was, it was good. You didn't have Leo take you over? Leo wasn't there that day. I was kind of disappointed. But uh, we've got more conversation to get in there. But anyway, if nothing else for the good of the body. And there's a lot of activity going on down in part of my district, part of Joe's deer season. There's a lot of different people in from out of state. Yes. Oh, and that's really nice. That goes to tour, that falls back on tourism. And it's really a destination of its own. If some of you want to go down there, there's a nice little building there. Uh, got bathrooms and rest area in it and everything. And it's worth drive, just to drive down there and ride across the ferry and drive over in Gillenburg and Butler County a little bit and turn around and come back. I mean, it's a it's a destination, not just a way of getting somewhere. Uh, I'm going to tell you about the December meetings. We only got one regular scheduled meeting. If something comes in, we're getting a buy and the bill has to be paid. We may have to look at a special call during the day. 
but as it is now, uh, there'll be only one. The first meeting in December. Is it going to be the second? Like it is, it's the second piece of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now November will be just like any other month. Yes. Um, the next court meeting, the bill list won't be ready until Monday because uh, Thursday and Friday were off. The holidays. Yeah. yeah. I know that's kind of pushing it, but there shouldn't be a whole lot on it. So we're still doing the 28th of November and the 12th of December. Yes, that's correct. Okay, no other good to uh, the body. We're going to, to adjourn.